My name is Jason Belcher, and this is my quality of character project on accountability. First off, I want to talk about three major themes that I'll be discussing within my presentation. Number one, do not blame others, which goes through taking responsibility for your own actions. Secondly, doing the right thing when no one is watching. And third, proactive versus reactive mentality. So, Accountability, what is it? It's the quality or state of being accountable, especially an obligation or willingness to accept responsibility or to account for one's actions. To be accountable, you must accept responsibility for your own actions. And that brings us to theme number one, do not blame others for where you are. If you're a student, it probably is not the teacher's fault. As an athlete, it's probably not the coach's fault or your teammate's fault. Or in your job, it's probably not your boss's fault. Coach K, the legendary Duke Blue Devils coach, and putting together your standards, remember that it is essential to involve your entire team. Standards are not rules issued by the boss. They are a collective identity. Remember, standards are the things that you do all the time and the thing for which you hold one another accountable. Now, Coach K is a 12-time Final Four coach. He's won five NCAA championships. He has over 1,000 wins. He's led Team USA to three gold medals and is a two-time inductee into the Basketball Hall of Fame. I have adopted this with my athletes. I like to give my team a lot of stake in rulemaking and what the values are going to be. Another legendary coach, Pat Summit, responsibility equals accountability equals ownership. And a sense of ownership is the most powerful weapon a team or organization can have. Now, Pat Summit has 1,098 wins. She was an eight-time NCAA champion, a gold medal winning coach. And in 38 seasons, she never had a losing season. So again, I've adopted some of Pat Summit's values into my program as well and giving my team a lot of accountability when it comes to what we do on a daily basis. Another legendary basketball coach, Lenny Wilkins, he has 1,332 victories. He's second all-time in victories. He's an NBA champion coach and has been a three-time inductee into the Basketball Hall of Fame. The most important quality I look for in a player is accountability. You've got to be accountable for who you are. It's too easy to blame others to blame things on someone else. Now, being accountable in school and home. Now, at school, being responsible for the grades. Second thing, ask for help when help is needed. And that brings us to theme number two, being proactive versus reactive. If you're going to miss class, get the work ahead of time. A lot of times students miss class and don't feel like they have to make up the work or they miss a test, so they feel like they don't ever have to come back and take that test. And at home, be responsible to your family and responsible for your family. And then that also leads to being a contributing member of society. In your day-to-day -day life, this brings us to theme number three, is doing the right thing when no one is watching. Eddie Robbins says to be accountable all the time, even when no one is looking. Now, accountability in athletics and sports for school and home, all that stuff also applies to athletes and there's another level for athletes have to be eligible to play have to have a 2.0 gpa have to be uh, responsible for the rules of the team and two of the the rules that i have and really the two main rules only rules is being on time and be accountable for your actions i think that encompasses pretty much everything the actions of one athlete affects the entire team not just one person if you fail a class, you're putting your not just yourself in jeopardy of playing, but you're causing your team to possibly be in jeopardy of having a successful season. Brings us also to theme number three, again, doing the right thing when no one is watching. In the weight room, if you're a coach of a lot of different players, a, a large team, you're not going to be able to keep track of every single student or every single athlete and all the reps are supposed to be doing. So as an athlete, if your coach tells you to do 10 reps, do the 10 reps because ultimately you're just going to cheat yourself if you only do seven or eight reps. And in social situations, one of the things I stress to my team all the time is just because you may not be in uniform, it may be a weekend, it may be the summer, you are a part of the team 24 seven. And there's plenty of time to socialize or to do things that might put yourself in jeopardy of being eligible to play on the team, to do that stuff at a different time when you're not a part of a team and responsible to other people. Continuing the accountability with sports is not just being accountable to yourself because a lot of times athletes do know what they need to do. They just try to deflect what they, what they should be doing. And if you can stress being accountable to them, 
they're going to hold themselves more accountable. They're going to be accountable to their teammates and then accountable also more so to the coach. And as a coach, you're accountable to every single player that you have. And bringing us to leaders and coaches, it really starts with building the team culture. Your values and expectations are key. And I like to give my players a stake in the beginning of every single year and what we're going to value as a team and our expectations on a daily basis. And it really comes down to leading by example. I can't break my own rules and expect my team to follow the rules. The do as I say, not as I do mantra is not good enough. And again, building off of Coach K and Coach Summit, Giving the, your team, giving my team ownership and input has been really key to the success that we've had over the past few years. One thing I really like to do is accept responsibility for when we, when we lose games to my team and also to any media outlets, but also when we win games, that it's not what I've done that made us win that game. It's my players and really taking that responsibility for the losses, taking the ownership for the losses and deflecting the praise and praising my players for when we win games. Bruce Brown teaching character through sport and sport it all depends on the coach and whether or not he makes a conscientious effort to actually teach the importance of high ethical standards by word and more importantly by example. Which set of behaviors is going to be learned and demonstrated in the arena is the sole responsibility of the coach. And we have to remember no matter if we're coaching younger kids, little league, uh, high school or college or professional levels, that as a coach, it's our duty to provide the directions. Passing the buck also from the Brown book, I really like this because what it gets down to at the bare basis of this is this whole entire poem, it's always someone else's fault. From the college professor to the high school teacher, middle school teacher, kindergarten teacher to the parents. And it's important as a coach that we have to teach our athletes the things that are right and the things that are wrong. We can't just expect them to know. They're not many adults. A lot of times that they need that direction and it's our responsibility as their coach to provide that direction. This is a video of Rocky Balboa. Uh, we don't have time within the time frame to watch this, but it, it's fantastic. Uh, I've broken it down on the next slide on the highlights of this speech. So the world is not all sunshine and rainbows. And as if you're a regular everyday person going to your job or an athlete going to practice going to games you have to go out and get what you're worth and the world is not an easy place and it might hit you and you just simply have to keep getting back up and you can't as as a person blame other people all the time it's not someone else's fault why we are not successful and that goes back to taking accountability where you're at in school at your job and taking the responsibility for your own actions, something that you did do, something that you didn't do. It's probably not your boss's fault. It's probably not your coach's fault. It's probably not a referee or umpire's fault. Building off of that Gandhi quote here, your belief becomes your thoughts, your thoughts become your words, your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits become your values, and your values become your destiny. You are the one that controls where your life is today, tomorrow, and in the future. A couple more quotes from the Brown book. The athlete has, the, has to come to the realization that work and practice are the surest ways to improve. When things are not going well, he looks to himself first to see where he can make a difference. The athlete sees himself as an active participant in his own rescue. The athlete is going to take the initiative, if they need more work, to get more work in. The non-athlete, on the other hand, is not going to take that accountability, and it's always going to be the one to point the fingers. It's always going to be someone else's fault, like the referee, the conditions, the coach. Uh, and in doing this, pulling the victim card all the time is not going to be honest with himself or herself in terms of where they stand and where they might need to improve. And in conclusion, accountability, in my opinion, is the root of many other virtues. Four of them in particular, integrity, good character, responsibility, and leadership. And ultimately, accountability is contagious. As a coach, if you are holding your players accountable, then your players will hold each other accountable, and ultimately, your program is going to be uh, better overall. Here's my work cited. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.